Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to eliminate parity from your solves intuitively. So as you may know, this right here is possibly the most annoying case you could possibly get on cube sheet. It's 13 slices long and takes up probably about 30% of your solve in square one. You'll get it about 70% of the times in solves and it's just a complete solve killer. Now, how you can eliminate this in all of your solves is by using a method called CSP or cube shape parity. Now, you might be thinking you've heard of this before and you might be thinking, well, how am I going to do this intuitively? This is just a ton of algs. Now, that's what I'm going to be teaching you today. So what CSP is, is you track a certain amount of pieces and then you do alternate cube shape algorithms to eliminate parity from your solve. Okay, so the first step you need to know about tracing is parity colors. All you need to know is that blue and orange mean parity and green and red mean parity. Any other combination of colors does not count as parity. The next thing you need to learn about tracing is that you're going to be splitting things up into groups of three pieces. How you're going to do this is you're going to be looking at where the opposites are of the three pieces you use. What you need to know is that if the first two colors are opposites of your pair, then you eliminate the middle one. If the opposites are the last two in your color pairs, you eliminate the last one. And if the opposites in your pairs of colors are the first and last, you eliminate the first one. After you determine which one you need to eliminate in your color pair, you'll be left with two colors. So in this case, it's the last two, so I need to eliminate the last. Now you'll be left with two colors. And if you remember, you're going to look at these two colors, and if you remember our parity colors, blue, orange, green, and red, you'll notice that these two colors are green and red. What does this mean? Green, red. Green, red means parity. Here's another example of three colors. We look at the three colors. We have blue, orange, green. And since the opposites are the last two, we eliminate the first one and we're left with two colors, orange and green. Orange and green means no parity because orange blue is parity, but this isn't blue. So we're left with no parity. Keep in mind all the pieces you use have to have the same color on top. So out of the three pieces, they either have to have all white on top or black or yellow on top. So how you count pieces is actually relatively simple. You do the simple color elimination and color parity thing like I've already taught you, and every time you get a parity, you start at zero, and every time you get a parity, you add one. So here I have three examples on how we're gonna do that. Starting off with our first example, we have green, red, blue, and if we remember, if the opposites are the first and last, we eliminate the first, so let's take out the first, and then we're left with red and blue. Now, this is not parity because orange and blue is parity, and red and green is parity, and this is not orange, blue, or red, green. So that's still at zero. Moving on to our second example, here we have red, orange, blue, and since the opposites are the first two, we eliminate the middle, and now we're left with red, blue, and once again, this is still zero, so we're still at zero. Now for the final example, we have green, orange, blue, and so since it's the first and last on the opposites, we eliminate the first, and now we're left with orange, blue, and orange, blue is parity, and since this is parity, we add one number, so now we're at one parity, because we start at zero, and every time we have a parity, we add one, so now we're at one. Now, let's apply everything we've learned to an actual cube shape. So here we have an actual cube shape, so let's start tracing. So first we're going to use our starting position, which will be this piece and this corner right behind it. So we need to look for three white pieces because we need to make sure our pieces have the same color on top. So I see a white piece is here, here, and here. So there's the first three white edges I see. So now I'm going to look at those three white edges, which I have here, here, and here. Now, just like I taught you, we're going to look for the opposites, which are here and here. And since they are the first and last, we eliminate the first. So let's just not look at the first. And now we're left with two colors right here. They are red and blue. 
which is no parity because red and blue is not parity. Only red and green and orange blue is parity. So that's zero, so zero parity so far. Now we're going to go to the closest piece that's black to our starting position. Here we have one black piece, two black piece, three black piece. So I'm gonna use these three. So we're gonna look at these three colors. And once again, the opposites are first and last. So we eliminate the first, so let's not look at this. Then we are left with two colors, which are green and red. And green red is parity. So we add that on to zero. So we have one. So now we're at one. Now we're gonna go to our corners. This is where it gets a little tricky. So first, our corner showing position is right here for this case. So what you're going to look at is you're always gonna be looking at this corner or this color on the top layer. So the piece on the corner, the piece facing you or on your right, and on the bottom, the one facing you or on the left, because if you flipped it over, it would still be on the right. So here we have white right here, here, and here. So we look at these three colors right here, and since opposites are first and last, eliminate the first, red, blue, that's zero. So we still are, at, so that's no parity, so we're still at one. Now we're gonna go to our black corners, and for this shape, I typically use this corner as a starting position. So we're gonna go here, 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 because these are the closest to my starting position. These are, the opposites are the first and, are the first two, so you eliminate the middle, and now you're left with these two colors right here, which are blue and orange, and blue and orange is parity, so we add one, so that's two, or you could go back to zero, which is what I like to do, but we'll just go to two for example. So now we're left with two parodies on corners, so that is the first step to tracing. Now the final step to tracing is odd position pieces. This part is probably the trickiest part in tracing in my opinion, but all you're going to be doing is going to your starting position, and then you're going to be looking at all of the edges and you're going to count the edges like this. You're going to go starting position, so one, skip this, two, skip this one, three, skip this one, four. So now you have four edges, so you go through all of the edges except skipping one. So going one, skip, one, skip one, one, skip one, two, or right here would be four. So one, skip one, two, skip one, three, skip one, four. And you're going to count the white edges that you have. So in this case, it would be three white edges, and that's odd, so that is parity. So we add back on to our parity count, which was two, so now we have three. Now we're just gonna do the same thing on corners. So starting position, one, skip one, two, skip one, three, skip one, four. This right here is even. And so now we are left with still three. So we have three parodies in total and odd is the good alloc for this case. So we would just solve cube shape. And then when we get to the end of the solve, we don't have parity. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing an example on a scallop kite. My starting position for scallop is this edge and the corner behind it, and for kite, it's this edge and the corner behind it. Now, when you're tracing, you always wanna be using pieces that are closest in a clockwise form to your starting position. So with my starting position, I would start here, and then the closest one clockwise would be here, and then on the bottom, the closest one clockwise would be the starting position. So we have here. So our three edges are these three, the opposites are the first two, so you eliminate the middle one, and you're left with orange and blue, so that's one parity, so we have one. Now, what I do to remember this is I, like, clinch my feet, um, so I can remember how many parodies I have, and if I get one, then I'll clinch my foot, and if I get, um, even, then I'll unclench it. But what you can do is, like, lift your thumb up and put it back down, or lift your finger and put it back down, or anything that works for you. So there we have one, so for instance, I'm gonna be putting my thumb up, um, just for example. So we have one, and then we're gonna be looking at black edges, which are here, here, and here. And so since the opposites are the last two, you eliminate the last, and that's another parity. So that would be two, so that's even, so you could put your thumb back down, so that's even, because it's red-green. Then for corners, you always start with the one that's that would be on the right or facing you. So it would be this one because it's facing you or on the right. So my finger's down, so I have 
here and then here and then here. My opposites are the first and last one, so I eliminate the first. That is green orange, which is still no parity, so we don't add anything onto our parity count. Then I'm going to do white corners, which are here. And then since this one's black, I would be using the closest one that would be in a clockwise form to my starting position. So here and here. Since the opposites are the last two, I eliminate the last and I'm left with orange and green. And that's still no parity, so we don't add, in, add on to our count, so we're still at two. Now we're gonna do odd positions, which would be starting position, skip one here, skip this one here and here. Now, so now that's one, so we would be adding on to our count starting position, or not starting position, but our parity count, so that's odd, so we add one, so odd, lift my thumb up. And then for corners, we have here, skip one here, and then skip one here, skip one here. That's another odd, so we add, um, one, so we add one more, and that's, uh, and that's four, which is even, so that is the good alg. Um, for odd positions, if you get um, zero or an even number of white edges, you don't add on to your parity count, or white edges, or white corners, whatever. You don't add on to your parity count for an even number of white colors on odd position. So that's zero, which is the good alg. So now if I do the solve, I don't have parity. I have UZ. And that's how you trace. Now finally, we have the algs part. Now the only thing you need to know for CSP algs is that on Scallop Kite, doing this, and then switching to Scallop Kite and back, that switches parity. And doing something like this, where you switch six corners along the slice layer, that also switches parity. If you can do, if you, all you have to do is find ways to set up each cube shape to something like that, where you can either do a corner switch or a scallop kite switch, and that's how you'll be able to solve any case. And finally, for coming up with your own algs, you, need, you can also come up with different ways to set up to cases that influence parity. So for instance, for this case, you have two ways you can set up to scallop kite. You can set up to scallop kite by moving two layers, or you can set up to scallop kite moving one layer. Now, depending on how many layers you move, it affects parity. So for instance, the odd alg, you would move two layers, and then you won't get parity. and then you don't have parity. So just figuring out ways to set up the cube shapes differently to influence parity. Now I'm going to go through some CSP cube shape walkthrough solves. So here we have the first case. I'm going to trace this. So I traced odd, and odd is the bad alg for me. So what I can do is I can set up to scallop kite, and then since it's the bad alg, I can do the scallop kite switch and then solve scalp kite. And then when I get to PBL, I don't have parity. I actually have a pretty nice PBL right here. We have our next case. I'm going to trace this. So I traced even. And so here, there's two ways you can set up to scallop scallop. You can set up in front or in back. And since it's even, I'm going, this is one of the cases you would set up differently to influence parity. And since it's even, I'm going to set up in back. And then when I get to PDL, I have no parity. Here's another case where you could set up to a cube shape differently and influence parity. So for this case, uh, there's two ways to set up to pawn pawn. And depending on how you set it up will influence parity. So I'm gonna trace this. So here I traced odd, and for the odd alg, I'm going to set up to scallop, or not scallop, scallop, pawn pawn in front, because if I had set up in back like this, it would have given me parity, but since I'm setting up in front, it cancels out parity, and then when I get to PBL, I don't have parity. So in conclusion, I think CSP is probably the most beneficial method in square one to improving. I think if you're sub 15 and are really aiming to get faster, such as sub 10 and sub 9 and beyond, I would highly recommend learning CSP. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and comment down what tutorial I should do next. Bye guys!